Guns for General Washington. Chapter 21. On to Westfield. At dawn, the horses and oxen were hitched up and the convoy started off. They followed a dry stream bed to a dirt trail. Henry knew from his map that the trail would take them straight to Westfield. For a long while, they had moved over hard, frosty ground coated with snow, a smooth surface for sled runners. But now the sun began to beat down, melting the snow and turning the trail to mud. This made it slow going for the patient animals who plodded along, dragging their heavy loads. As usual, Colonel Knox fretted about losing time, but even he realized that the weather was something he couldn't give orders to. Mr. Becker's shoulder was now healed, and he took over the reins of their wagon. J.P. was a little disappointed at losing his job, but Will saw this and invited the boy to ride with him on the big sled. Will's vehicle, hauled by eight oxen, carried a 24-pounder that the men had nicknamed the Old Sow. Young John was thrilled to be riding alongside his friend, and he watched with pleasure the skillful way Will handled his four pair of oxen. To help pass the time, William taught J.P. a lively song called the Derby Ram, which people said was a favorite of General Washington's. J.P. soon learned the words, and as they rode along, he and Will sang together. As I went down to a derby on a market day, I met the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. The wool on that ram's back, sir, reached up to the sky. Eagles built their nests there, I heard the young ones cry. He had four feet to walk on, sir, he had four feet to stand. And every one of those feet, sir, covered an acre of land. And it's true, my lads, it's true, my lads, I never was given to lie. If you'd have been in Derby, you'd see the same as I. By the time the caravan plodded into Westfield, everyone was in a festive mood. Once again, the whole population came out to meet them. Few of the locals had ever seen cannon before, and they marveled at the giant weapons tied on the carts. They also gave the travelers ale, cider, and all the good food they could eat. At the town inn, Henry and Will relaxed and joined the fun. The brothers smiled at each other happily, suddenly aware that the worst of their ordeal was over. The ale flowed freely, and numerous toasts were offered. Here's to Colonel Knox, someone shouted. And here's to good old General Washington, others cried. Here's to the artillery train. Here's to the rebel cause, and to blazes with the British. A farmer brought out a fiddle, and someone else brought out a dulcimer. They played tunes such as the Massachusetts Hop and the Road to Boston, and Will Knox his knee all better joined in a lively square dance called a quadrille. Will was bursting with pleasure and excitement. Henry was also pleased, but he tried to keep his emotions in check. It looks right good, he admitted to Will. But remember, we're not home yet. As a climax to the festivities, Henry treated the townspeople to a demonstration. From their small supply, he filled a powder horn and poured it into the breech of the old sow. Then he put a match to the cannon's touch hole. The gun erupted in a powerful but harmless boom. Everyone was impressed and cheered loudly. Thank the Lord, Will said to J.P. with a grin, that the British are too far away to hear us. And we'll read chapter 22 next time. Till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for listening. I love you guys. Bye-bye.